We are always looking for ways to take care of our properties in a bid to prolong their lifespan. Our cars, boats, machinery, and trucks are no different. The type of protection we give to them depends on what we want, the available space and the funds at our disposal. If you decide to use a car shed, you may need to know how to build a car shed on your own. However, to build a car shed, you may need to get a permission. You also need a building permit from the local authorities. They may want to see the design of what you intend to build. Such a structure can change the value of the property and add to the facade of the environment. Because of these alterations that these types of structures can bring, seeking and getting permission is very important. Work with care and pay attention to these initial steps. They are very essential to the hitch-free success of your project. There could be some useful information that you may learn from building codes also. Things like how deep the footings should be or materials that are needed. Also, make sure to have an engineer that will help in planning the roof. That is because, it is going to support quite a significant weight. Steps to building a car shed. The following steps are the DIY tips. This is for the building of a car shed that can contain two cars. Building a big standalone shed is a good addition to your property. And it also keeps your cars protected from the elements. The first advice is to be focused and make proper decisions. This is because at every stage of the construction, there should be a plan from the beginning to the end. Always be attentive to whatever might go wrong. That will help you get it arrested on time and prevent an irreversible or costly mistake. Materials needed. 1. 6 pieces 4x4 four four lumber, 84 inches long, for posts. 2. 4 pieces 2x6 two lumber, 240 inches long, to support beams. 3. 8 pieces 4x4 four four lumber, 32 and a half inches long, for braces. 4. 11 pieces 2x6 two lumber, 243 inches, 22 pieces 2x4 two lumber, 157 inches, 10 pieces 2x4, 2 22 and a half inches, trusses. 5. 300 square feet 3 quarters inch chiseled plywood, for gable ends. 6. 8 pieces 2x4 two lumber, 157 inches, 30 pieces 2x4 lumber, 7 inches long, overhangs. 7. 18 pieces 3 quarters inch plywood, 4 by 8, for decking. 8. 600 square feet underlayer tar paper, for underlayment. 9. 600 square feet asphalt shingles, for roofing. 10. Concrete tube form, post anchor. 11. 5 and a half inches carriage bolt, 2 and a half inches screws, raft ties. 12. Asphalt shingles, roofing felt tools required 1 safety glasses and safety gloves 2 jigsaw and miter saw 3 tape measures carpentry pencil chalk line and spirit level 4 drill bits and the drill machine how to build a carport or car shed the first thing to do in starting your project is to map out the layout of the shed this should be done in a very professional manner Batter boards with strings can be used. If not, the result you would get may not be professional. Apply the rule of 3, 4, 5 to each of the corners to be sure that they are in a right angle. Also, you have to keep adjusting the strings to the point where the diagonals are equal. There are so many ways that your posts can be set in place. You should first dig a hole of about 3 inches deep. It should not be less than 6 inches below frost line. After that, pour 2-inch layers of gravel. Next is to install tube and fit in the post in place. Use plumb to be sure that they are level. Then use braces to secure the installed posts. After that go on to fill mortar or concrete in the forms. As an alternative, posts anchors could be used. There is need to get the anchors secured into concrete. This will lock up the posts firmly into place. Make sure everything is aligned with care and attention. Allow a few days to pass to allow the concrete dry out before continuing the project. Besides, you must plumb the post using spirit level. A straight edge should be placed on top the post. 
This is to confirm if there is any slope or if it is perfectly horizontal. When the concrete has set, the woodwork continues. The next thing is to attach the support beams on the posts. After that, drill pilot holes through the posts and the 2x6 beams. The beams are then clamped in place and the 7 inches carriage bolts inserted. Put the washers and tighten the bolt. But take care not to over tighten it. This is to avoid splitting the wood. Considering the expanse of the roof, the frames need to be reinforced using braces. The braces should be built using 4x4 lumber and their ends cut at 45 degrees angle. The braces will then be attached into place. Next is to drill in pilot holes. The pilot holes will be locked into place using 3 and a half inches galvanized screws. The process of getting the roof built can be quite complex because the frame is wide. You need to gather a lot of roof trusses to a level platform. The components need to be cut into the right sizes. After that, you lock them together tightly using wood screws. Use the 2x6 lumber to make the underneath rafters. And use the 2x4 lumber for common rafters. It will be a wise move to include many intermediate rafters at the end of the trusses. They will help support the gable ends. We also advise that you use half an inch plywood gussets to fortify the joints. The gussets should be attached on top of the joint. You then lock each of them tightly with nails. The weight and size of the trusses might be too much for you alone to handle. So, you may want to get a friend to help you in fitting them with the frame of the shed. Attach the trusses to the top of the frame. This is to give support to the beam. Then lock them with screws. Before inserting the screws, you should drill a pilot hole. This will help prevent the wood from splinting. It will be good to place your trusses in equal space. A space of about 24 inches should be left between them. Plumb the trusses using a spirit plumb. You then use braces to get them locked into place. After that attach the decking sheet. Fit 2x4 blockings between the trusses to make the structure rigid enough. When this is done, join the gable and the trusses end to end. With the use of grooved siding measuring 3 quarters of an inch. Get the trusses locked using finishing nails. The spacing of the nails should be 8 inches wide. Get the sheet well aligned if you desire to have a professional outcome. You may want to add some styles and class to your car shed. If so, you should attach overhangs on the front and back of your new construction. Common rafters and long blockings of 7 inches should be used to achieve a rigid structure. You then attach them to the roof of the structure using 3 and a half screw. Get pilot hole drilled through its rafters and insert 2 and a half screws into the blockings. Use the grooved plywood sheets and 3 quarters of an inch tongue to attach to your roof. It is very important that you must adhere to a pattern. This is to ensure that your structure is rigid enough. Ensure that the sheets are aligned at the two ends. Get them locked onto the rafters using one and a half inches nails. The spacing of the nails should be six to eight inches. It is important that the gaps formed between the laid sheets are closed. That will help your work have a professional look. To uplift the outlook of your project, use a one quarter inch plywood and attach it to your rafters. Also, 1x6 trims should be fitted to the ends of the rafters and the overhangs. Get the plywood and trims secured into place with 1.5 inches finishing nails. To give your work a professional look, and prevent any future issues, work with care and attention. Get the roofing of your shed covered with a roofing felt. Make sure they are overlapping each other at the strips by a minimum of 2 inches. Get the paper tar secured on the plywood with a roofing staple. Also, get a 12 inches PCs that will go to the top of the ridge. Fit the edge of the drip on the roofing felt. While the drip edges below should be fitted under the roof felt. The next thing is to get the starting course placed under the roof. This should be done before the asphalt shingles are installed. Always follow the manufacturer's instruction before you start the installation. This is because there are different aspects that may differ. Finally, to make your work looks neat, check the shingles. 
Make sure that they are overhanging down the drip edge by one quarter of an inch. Also, the asphalt shingle should be secured with tacks on the roof deck. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you'll know once we post a new video. Also, drop a comment below so we can know your thoughts. Finally, don't forget to check the description below for more details and visit our site www.zimcarportplus.com for more awesome carport content like this.